after a few hours running this is seriously annoying and what is wrong is that the worm and uh, I don't know what sort of gear you call that it's a sort of beveled spur gear somehow are completely worn out to the fact that one no longer drives the other I mean I don't know how much running I've done with this but it's only a few hours and it is lubricated by me and completely worn out useless so the question is among the dozens of boxes of miscellaneous gears retrieved from various mechanisms over the years can I find some gears to replace the worn out ones on this rail car. Hmm. Here's one. Might be a bit big, however. So, with a certain amount of jiggery pokery and a very handy kind of uh, split 3BA ring spanner. And a 3BA nut driver, yes, supplied over long in my view. Nut and bolt has been removed, and the motor unit is out to enable me to further investigate. The worm gear on the motor it's not falling about doesn't show any signs of wear itself this little brass gear that fits on the driving axle is completely mullered up not sure how well it comes out but it is looks to me as if the fit of the two parts was wrong from the word go I'm rethinking this uh, drive unit for this uh, Timden rail car a little bit. I'm thinking, whilst dissimilar metals in engineering applications are often quite a good idea, I suppose the classic is the crankshaft of a motor car, hardened steel of various sorts and uh, you know the soft white metal bearings of the conrods I'm thinking that this steel worm driving the what is effectively a soft brass pinion ain't a great idea and what's happened of course is the pinion is now destroyed because the, uh, in many ways this worm is acting like a milling cutter in my view. So what I'm thinking, I've got various little brass gears, and metal ones too come to that, um, but what I'm thinking is, it would be the easiest thing in the world to either make this steel on steel, or on the lathe, it's dead easy to make a worm drive on the lathe and turn a suitable worm up in brass or gunmetal on the lathe to drive a, a brass gear. So that's where I am at, but I haven't quite decided what to do. As best I can judge, this existing steel worm is equivalent, using my thread gauge, to 18 teeth per inch. 
this one was going to cut something similar on the lathes but clearly the pinion would need to be compatible which uh, that one is and that one is not uh, I don't have to express it really but there aren't enough teeth isn't it? it's a bit too coarse it doesn't mesh correctly with the worm whereas this one would so I guess the answer is if I were to use that gear and then to cut a worm in brass or bronze to go on there to be compatible with that little brass gear. Now there is a possible issue that technically and strictly to be compatible with the worm the pinion should be cut with a slight helical cut which clearly this uh, straight spur gear type pinion I'm thinking of using is not um, now whether that's going to create issues I'm not sure now if I'm to remake this worm in let's say brass I need to get this steel one off and it is very very firmly affixed I can't just pull it off so I've put a bit of heat proof protection around the motor and the plan is to warm this up a little bit and see if I can't pull it off with some pliers. Well it took a lot more heat than I expected and clearly this uh, worm was loctited onto the motor shaft but with the application of rather more heat than I thought I would need I did eventually manage to pull the pinion off the shaft without destroying the motor. I have checked it still works. Of course when I pulled it off it did its obligatory off into outer space and I spent the last 10 minutes on the floor in the swarf looking for the pinion but as you can see I found it. So here is the replacement bronze worm is it going to be any better than the steel one? Oh, if I know really. Right, I've uh, fitted the worm to the motor, motor spindle with a bit of retaining compound. So we'll probably leave that overnight just to set. And then we'll see how we get on. The motor unit has been reassembled into the vehicle with the new bronze worm and the brass pinion spur gear that I found in my bits box and the two have been uh, carefully meshed together so that they seem to work So, uh, fingers crossed. So the new gear and arrangement clearly works. Although it is quite a bit noisier than the original. I don't think that matters too much actually. And of course, as you would imagine, while I'm just testing this, it has decided to start raining. So we won't be going on that long. Hopefully you can uh, kind of hear the whirring of the gears, the uh, revised gearing arrangement. But if it works and doesn't wear out, I can put up with it. 
I was having a bit of a tidy up and I suddenly found this kit which I'd forgotten that I had. Can't remember when I bought it or where. And it says twin balcony bogey coach kit to go behind a rail car. And uh, it's made by Timpton Models. As you can see, I've made the kit up and connected it to the rail car and we'll see how we get on. I've never seen any prototype photographs indicating that a rail car ever towed such a twin balcony type coach. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist, just means I've never seen a photograph of such. And. Uh, I'm not sure actually that I quite like the appearance of the whole thing. For the time being, however, I'll see how we get on.